welcome to my channel Kasia Sewing School. My name is Kasia and in this video I'm gonna show you eight best seams used in the leather garment construction. Now before we started I'm gonna show you I'm using a very soft leathers. Yeah it's a lamb napa leather. Very nice to work with and looks beautiful as a in a garment as a skirt, jackets, trousers, actually every use. The skins can be quite big. You can have them up to 14 square feet, which would accommodate full leg trousers, which is nice because then you don't have to cut air panels. And we're gonna start from the simple, very common seam, clean open seam. So we're gonna stitch like normal in the garment, in the fabric. Reinforce at the beginning. These machines are not fast. You cannot really speed up on those. Uh, they're not as fast as the normal industrial machines. So here is our piece, we just stitched together, we're gonna now flat open it. For that I'm gonna use a rubber glue and I'm gonna apply evenly on each side of the same. When you're using this glue, uh, please open windows. Needs to be in a ventilated area because it's quite toxic. So the reason why I'm using on both sides immediately is the very important factor in a flat clean seam is that we're gonna put a pressure evenly on both sides of the seam. If we would just glue one side, glue it, and then the other, you would create here a leap. It would overpower one side. So the reason we're using both sides evenly applying a glue and then flattening it reason is that we creating nice clean seam so that's our first seam open clean and then you don't do any stop stitching you're just leaving like that sometimes people use hammer i use hammer as well but because this is so soft leather i don't need to do it Our next seam is flat open seam. So we're stitching normal seam first. So flat open stitch five millimeters each side of a seam to create nice top stitching effect. So we're stitching our seam together. I'm gonna open now and now I'm gonna use my hammer to flatten the seam it's like kind of iron uh, to have even surface the seam is really flat here to fall now I'm gonna top stitch each side foot width so I'm aligning my seam groove here against the outer edge of my foot. I'm always holding the threads not to have a mess up underneath. This machine does it like domestic that if you're not holding first two stitches it's gonna 
I kind of mess it up in the bottom. Now I'm gonna walk across on the other side of the seam. Again, align my groove of the seam against the outer edge of my foot and that I'm using as a guide. Stitching again. And that's it. That's how it looks as a seam. So it's flat open, you've got two stitches on each side, holds the seam flat on the wrong side, and looks like that. So that's one. Our next seam is another version of the uh, flat open seam. So it's stitching again, reinforcing at the beginning. Now we again gonna hammer down to flatten it. And now I gonna also stitch on each side of the seam, but this time as a guide I'm gonna use the internal foot because I got here two feet. So I'm gonna use internal foot as a guide, edge of that internal foot against the groove of my seam uh, to achieve very nice narrow seam. So here it is. We again reinforcing our seam. Now we are achieving very nice narrow top stitching close to the seam which I call it boot seam and it's kind of quite often called like that because you're gonna see them in the uh, boots on the back of the boots stitch like that so that's another way of uh, making a seam flat obviously without using glue in this Two, last two seams and now we've got nice and narrow so that's a feature in your garment again it's flat open here is a very narrow edge stitched here's foot width can you see the difference so now we've got this free seam and a completely clean one So now I'm going to show you another um, way of top stitching on the seams. So I'm making normal seam stitching two pieces together. I pre-stitch already two pieces. And the difference is that this one all of them now gonna be close to one side, like close seams in the garments. So we're gonna hammer down one way to create a leap. And now we're gonna stitch just foot width. I'm going to stitch that one with a foot width. It looks like that. That's nice, beautiful foot width seam. And we turn the seam one way.
So that's another stitch together pieces. And now we're gonna also just move one way, keeping as a seam closed. We're gonna hammer it down again to flatten it. And this one we're gonna, like previously, stitch just edge stitch, meaning we're gonna use the narrow foot, edge of narrow foot and groove as a guide to create another look. So that's our another narrow seam, but it's only on one side, closing the seam on the wrong side one direction, making the rest to look like that. That's another, another piece, we're doing the same work, it's stitched together, we're turning it one side only, hammering down, and in this case I'm gonna stitch one top stitch, it's gonna be my guide against my narrow foot edge to the groove, and we're gonna mimic in this here our twin stitch, top stitching. So that's one. And now as a guide, I'm gonna use my outer foot edge against the first line top stitching. And that's gonna create nice gap. We created twin stitch top stitching on a seam. So that's our three types of closed seams top stitch foot width, top stitch narrow, and using both combined, getting a twin stitch, top stitch. Next seam I'm gonna show you is a bit different. Um, in the pattern, when you would create pattern for your garment, uh, sides which you would put overlap on a seam, you would leave net. There would not be seam allowance on that piece. On the other, which goes under, would be a centimeter. And we call that seam row edge seam. So there is no stitching together like previously. We're just overlaying two pieces. And we edge stitching it using our narrow foot to go against edge of our leather. That seam I use quite often in quite thicker letters. Of course, this is a designer feature. So you have to think in your designs if you want to use it like that and makes always garment look different. But also that narrows a lot the thickness of leather. So it's much thinner here, it's still very clean, and here is on the edge, like there is a raw edge of that seam, yeah? And the thickness is quite big difference in that, 
Yeah, so it's that our normal closed seam and that's overlap seam. You also can run another row of stitching and then you're gonna have a twin top stitching with a row edge of your seam. All of that is important in your design. How the garment gonna look on the end. So that's how that would look like if we would have twin stitch. Next thing I want to show you is a bit different and I love it because you can use it in the curvy parts of the garment. Uh, if you're creating kind of like mask or corset from a bit more rigid leather, like that one was very soft, yeah, very nice and soft leather. That one is quite rigid. And that's why I chosen. I'm gonna use technique where I'm gonna have a row cut and I'm gonna top stitch to piece of other piece of leather, strap of leather. Um, in this case, because the leather is much thicker, I'm using much thicker thread. It's a top stitching Mara 30. Uh, first of all, gonna look nicer as a feature. Second of all, because the leather is very thick, very rigid, it needs support of the thread, 120 uh, could snap. So now I'm gonna use the same technique as I use here in a row edge top stitching seam. So I'm keeping edge of my panel to the edge of my narrow foot. I'm gonna follow the shape of the panel. I'm putting strap of my leather underneath. Now I'm gonna take the other panel which goes exact opposite way and I'm gonna attach now edge to edge again to the other panel with the with the leather strap underneath. And I'm exactly following the line of my previous panel, attaching my row cuts edge of the other panel. And that shapes leather nicely. So I use that very often in the rigid leathers when I'm constructing corsets or believe or not, uh, face masks, neck kind of collars, high to the chin. So that's how that created a shape in it. Yeah? Following whatever shape we want. This is very useful same same when you're doing rigid letters and you still want to give some shape to it. So now for example I can trim excess of that letter strap close to the seams which gonna make um that panel why well, i'm doing it uh, because the panel gonna be cleaner inside sometimes you're not using uh, linings 
and that make the finish quite nice and clean. Yeah. So that's our wrong side and that's our right side created a shape in the quite rigid leather. I want to show you the same thing which I've just done uh, row edge to row edge with much more rigid leather. This is really hard. This is nearly like cardboard. It's vegetable tan leather which you use to mold shaping leather for pouches for uh, saddles and belting. That one is quite thin. That one is two millimeter thin, but it's still very rigid. So why I gonna use this seam? I gonna use this seam to show you that you can construct two pieces together with this seam even in a rigid leather I'm using black thread for you to bear to see it I'm gonna touch the other piece I want to take the thread to the back. I'm putting close to the other edge. And now that piece is joined together, but you can literally bend it and make it stand. You can attach another piece and kind of use bag making technique on a flat bed machine. Because for bag making, you would use actually free arm. Or let's say you don't have it and you still want to construct some um, nice rigid leather piece so that seam is great for it. So here we've got a collection of our seams. I hope you like it. Please if you like it give me a thumbs up. If you really love it and want to see more of it, please subscribe, press the bell to get a notification when I upload a new videos. And if you struggle with something, with any, any sewing problems you have and you would like to see video of it, please uh, leave me a comment below.